6 May 2022. Hi, thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel and go to my website www.susanmeeling.com. So, I have been a part of a few things. And I don't just mean in reference to locations since waking up from my coma after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. And I've been a part of a few locations, a few events, um, so on and so forth. Currently, I've kind of been taking a bit of a hiatus because I've needed to. You know, some people who may have thought whatever they may have, I do deal with headaches and migraines and with everything that has occurred, I've needed to take a break because of these different situations. So while, yes, for especially the past 22 years, I have done a lot of work, you know, just surviving a head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, uh, surviving the coma, surviving a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain that took eight and a half years to dissipate, I still deal with headaches and because it's been 22 years, it, you know, chronic pain is chronic pain. I still deal with migraines and again, chronic pain is chronic pain. I went from college algebra with trigonometry and calculus to second grade math, though, to work on things because I had to be taught how to count from one to 10. I've done what I could there, so I earned 26 scuba diving certifications. You can actually see that in finding a silver lining if you go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, and look at my book section if you don't know about the Dropbox link, because I counted 16. That was my counting. I had to actually literally re, 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 re count my scuba diving certifications. So you can actually see my arithmetic issues from 2014, okay? Although by technicalities, it was 2013 when I initially started on that. So that's, that's, that's my arithmetic there from compared to what I could do, which was college level AP geometry and college Algebra with trigonometry and calculus. So there's my second grade math. Although, you know what, possibly some second graders might be capable to actually count to 26 in comparison to it taking me to 2019 or 2020. So that's, that's, there's that for, you know, some of those people such as my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister that had wished otherwise. Same thing with some of my ex-in-laws. Though I did the best that I could, um, you know, having survived all that and not ever actually having anybody in person, face to face in person, except when I was in medical hold unit that made some attempts to actually assist me because, you know, I was 17 years old, even though the only way you can join the army without, um, certain legal paperwork signed in my son's case, I made, I, I did not be hypocritical. It was very simple. So if like my biological mother and biological father and biological sister were to that level because they are that better, in my opinion, um, and they did a whole bunch of what have you because they wanted me to feel whatever garbage and that crap, in my opinion, um, that also lets people know in the tri-state area and the state of Illinois and the state of Texas, as well as even Washington State and anywhere that I had gone to work on my Medal of Honor art project, the type of people that my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister have always been. That lets you know to that level if any hypothetical as to my son and that, oh, okay, no, I, I'm not hypocritical. Though if they wanted to really, really do it, although they did, if any hypothetical connection regarding my daughter, daughter, um, I was 12 years old when I was invited to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. So, you know, those people with their issues in that hypothetical, that lets everybody know what I've been dealing with since I was a child. 
Mm -hmm. Well before I was a teenager and obviously before becoming a biological adult. Unfortunately, I know I'm not the only one. So there is that. And so unlike what my biological mother, biological father, biological sister hypothetically proved themselves to be, similarly to my ex-in-laws and anybody that they associated with in those particular references, that's them. Now, what my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister, as well as congregants in Old Santa Presbyterian Church that were not in the church during the time frames when the board meeting was about the um, basement in Old Santa Presbyterian Church, they wouldn't have the slightest inclination as to how I am about debates. And I'll tell you why in this lecture. So. I am the type of person who can agree to disagree if various points are brought forward. I can also be extremely strong in my standpoint. And if I believe in something, it doesn't matter. If I actually believe in something, such as for the example of how they could have just left everything the way it was, and instead of how many board meetings for board meetings of board meetings of board meetings of the most bored of board of board of board, in those references where I could stand and debate and go back and forth and bring points out one after the other after the other and go toe to toe, it didn't matter, I was going at it in reference to each and every congregant in the church as a child with my biological mother who was a deacon and my biological father who was a trustee and those who have met them, well, you have an idea of what I dealt with. And so I stood my ground though because I knew I was correct. I knew that no matter what anybody said, and I was proven to be correct, not in a salt in the wound sort of situation, more along the lines of what occurred thereafter. So, in youth group though, those teenagers that were in high school that thought whatever they thought, because you know how people who get into Hollywood and people who get into Broadway, well, I was always the lead and or the co-lead. And so for those who know how New Jersey is, let's be realistic on that. And so those people, you know, they thought whatever they thought. It was before as well as after confirmation class. And for those who need a reference, go look at Austin in regards and or Dallas, Fort Worth, regarding the dominant mentor program. Then, for anybody else who might need another reference, go and look at how I earned apparently 26, not 16, scuba diving certifications for that particular reference. And additionally, taking consideration, I landed at the bottom of the lakes, the quarries, the hot springs, apparently a reservoir, uh, but now that's kind of a pond in comparison. And then the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic area, the ocean, finding some, you know, forming underwater volcanoes, and then the Vandenberg and the Abyss Trench area. So, you know, and again, I call it the Mafia's Abyss as to where I went because I am a fan. Uh, and I, I, I acknowledge it, I am a fan of General Jim Mattis because he's so mean and I really do, but he's not mean mean, but he's kind of mean, but he's like, it's a thing. I, I, have a, I have my thing about the Marines. I haven't hidden that or denied it. And by technicalities, I can actually say I haven't hidden that because of some of my modeling pictures in a obviously different type of dress blues because I know better than to steal valor. I'm smarter than, you know, anybody who would think that'd be a good idea, you know. And for an example, even after waking up from my coma for my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, at the first uniform fetish ball, I actually lit into, and when I say lit, I mean military lit. It was San Antonio, Texas. It was the uniform fetish ball. If you want any confirmation as to me picking up on energy, I lit, I, I woo. <laughs> woo -hoo -hoo. That boy was crying when it came to him getting chewed out. 
because where my son and my daughter haven't ever had that, they haven't ever had it where I just A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No, 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 no. <laughs> that boy was standing in apparently his uncle's uniform crying like a little baby. <laughs> you would have thought it was basic training. <laughs> elementary schoolers <laughs> or 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 you would have thought it was Mike yelling at anybody <laughs> and him being accurate <laughs> in that particular reference and since I grew up with that in Texas remember he's older just remember he's older and medicated from the time frame you got to meet him same thing with you Illinois you don't have anything on no, <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> so I got into debates when it came to certain classes because certain classes in school required that. So again, yes, there have been times in different lifestyle areas that yes, I did get into in comparison to that uniform fetish ball where it was, I don't think you have the end. <laughs> You know, it was just, it was the thing. And you know, when I'm accurate and I know what's best, I, 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 I tend to, I tend to be a little rar. <laughs> I'll just leave it as rar. <laughs> and I won't let up if I know I'm accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe the official YouTube channel with my official YouTube videos and or my journal blog, um, my website www.susanneeling.com, that might give you an example. Because when I believe that sh people should make the correct choices, if I have to come in and be like, okay, so now, now that, now children, yes, I don't care if you're biologically older than me, if I have to what have you, I'm going to inform you, I'm not going to fluffify it after a certain point in time. So, <laughs> so if you liked my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmealing.com, when I first started it out, well, I had some business to take care of. So it's really the exact same, it's just clarifying and, and making sure certain things are understood because you know, those people in those areas really shouldn't be surprised at all because, you know, if I ever had a situation that I had to clarify, I usually would go in person, face to face in person. And 9.9999999999 times out of, well, really, re realistically, 10 times out of 10, I went in person, face to face in person to go deal with whatever the situation was. And so, you know, clarifying in regards to my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanbeeling.com, if you on FetLife thought anything had to do with you on FetLife and or Facebook and or Cafe Mom or what have you, believe me, if I didn't show up and speak with you in person, face to face in person because of whatever issue was of whatever issue was it had nothing to do with you believe it or not <laughs> if you need a reminder there's 2019 2020 and 2021 that you can take in consideration so anybody in those hypotheticals that may have had a misunderstanding hopefully that is cleared up and you understand now yeah, so I and people who have claimed I know how people are from New Jersey. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> Not where I'm from. Mm -mm. And when I say where I'm from, I don't translate that to Marlboro Township. I translate that to the entire state of New Jersey because of where I grew up going around. The entire area of the five boroughs, because where I grew up going around, the entire area of the New York State, which of course includes Staten Island and Long Island, because that's where I grew up going around, as well as Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Lancaster, yeah, but other areas in the state of Pennsylvania, because of where I grew up going around. So for all the people in those particular references, if they ever had any question or possibly didn't believe that I actually was born and raised in New Jersey. I'm going to guesstimate now, you know. <laughs>
without a doubt. Because most likely, especially if I only knew you after I woke up from my coma, after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, most likely the only reference you had was my biological sister, and she was not raised going to those areas, which you could obviously be capable to tell the difference. She was an, see, I got accused of having a sheltered life only because I didn't grow up watching movies or television shows above a G rating, which I didn't really understand because I knew where I grew up going around. And if you wanted to consider a sheltered life, well, hypothetically, uh, there's been some proof as to that clarification. And so, <laughs> in comparison to my biological sister, which there you can see who actually has and had the sheltered life. Because for example, my biological sister did not want to go to a college more than an hour and a half away from our biological parents. Whereas I went and was like, yeah, we're ever around the world. Yeah, military, that's cool. It don't matter. <laughs> I know I have this great idea. You could station me out in South Korea so I could go to China to do some recon because I was told about some stuff going on in China and I've been dealing with stuff as a child out as far as the Atlantic area, the ocean, as well as stuff as far as like the backyard and my buff poo handled stuff. So I need to know because you know, the United States of America, I'm a smidgen patriotic, just by a smidgen. So yeah, no, it's fine, infantry, cavalry, combat arms, I, mm -mm, I, was, I wanted to go to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment, I'm sure they have some ideas as far as, oh wait, there's that Tic Tac video, and a few AP, UAPs. So okay, so you guys know what I'm talking about. Well, this is back in 2000, where I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll go handle business. No, it's fine. It's fine. My my buck poo let me know about some stuff. My buck gong let me know about some stuff. I know where to go. And that was before my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. So, you know. <laughs> but that was what I was ready to take care of. So it is what it is as far as that's concerned. And that lets you know the difference. So then after waking up from my coma, my biological mother and biological father were like, oh, well, you can move back to Illinois and stay. Nope, I'll stay in Texas. Yeah, why? Because Texas has the Second Amendment and I have the right to stand my ground. And then there's the military guys all nearby and I could totally, you know, not be near you. That'd be awesome. They show up to Texas, a few situations happen in San Antonio and I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna go four and a half hours away. <laughs> this is the example that you need to pay attention. So I'll go live in another area that I don't know, deal with whatever, you know, and then I'm sure hypothetically there was needless stirring of drama because of my biological mother and biological father and biological sister in comparison to just accepting the facts and it's like nope bye <laughs> no let me make it clear so that you actually understand okay i wind up in arizona then washington state okay i have this sensation of whatever go do my medal of honor art project stuff and all this whatever okay get back to the state of texas yo what up yo <laughs> who the who, who's been who, whose bright idea was it and most likely Anna, Mike, and or Patricia, and or my ex-in-laws. All right, so let me clarify and verify some stuff because I am not a part of this because I've already been dealing with stuff and I don't just mean as far as those people, I'm translating that to like every other aspect while I'm at it. Excuse me, civilian recreational scuba divers. Good morning, yes. So do you actually appreciate life? Are you sure? Because if you actually appreciate life, you haven't shown it. Let me clarify that. Okay, and so there's these two areas where you do not stir up needless drama. Anybody who has common sense knows better. I'll get to that in a minute though. So again, you can go to my website www.susanbeeling.com and take a look at, you know, like the ordinary PSA, my journal blog, it might give you a few reminders on a few things. So, but you also can subscribe to and go and look at my prior official YouTube videos and listen to what I'm discussing in the lectures regarding that and make sure you like my official YouTube videos and if you have a comment, please do have etiquette and respect. So, in church one day, in youth group, we had to take, we were assigned two different sides. 
And I think I was in ninth or 10th grade. Now, mind you, again, all these years, it's known that I'm the original baby Jesus Christ. I have gotten the lead and or the co-lead for plays that I didn't want to be a part of. I was perfectly content just going and doing other things. And because my biological mother and my biological father were as they were, and you know, those situations don't pretend regarding coding and Prudential, which Prudential would be capable to just take a look at the productivity level regarding my biological mother throughout the time frame after 1993, or technically 1992. From the time frame in 1992, you could basically see the productivity level at Prudential and you know who was actually doing the work. Hi. So, <laughs> yes. So in regards of this youth group situation, we didn't get to pick our sides. And so we were supposed to debate. Well, the other side made their points and I listened to the points and then I said, yeah, well, I can agree with that. And the people started laughing on the other side. The people who were on my side were infuriated. And I stood there and I was like, what? What? the individual adults that were leading this, they had said, well, Susan, you're supposed to debate. And I said, but I cannot tell a lie. They made points that made sense. How do you expect it to do certain things if all you're going to do is debate? So if you actually believe in certain situations and the points are presented where it's actually something to agree upon, well, then I'm going to point out what's accurate. And so while the individuals anywhere from ninth grade all the way through 12th grade thought it was funny, they thought it was hilarious. And I, I looked at them, I said, it's actually sad that you think it's funny because this lets you know exactly who you are going to be if you don't pay attention to these details. Because if you are only going to be the type that stirs up needless drama, you're going to be found to be as worthless as this debate was. And the people who were on my side, they had wanted me to explain why I had changed my stance, but I didn't change my stance because it was an assigned situation. So I went and I listed down not just what they had brought up, but then I gave points as to backing up my reason to actually, so I, <laughs> I only had added more in that regard. And so then the people who had been on the other side, they got angry. Because even though I had technically agreed with them, they were angry that I had better points than they had. <laughs> and then, you know, because I am myself, I looked at them and I said, well, it's not my fault. You didn't know any better. That's your fault. That's not my fault. That's your fault. And so it was as it was. They had a little bit of a temper tantrum. There was a there was a situation where they were in, they, they, they were educated in reference to one female and, um, you know, there was the couch and, and that caught her. And so it was as it was. And she didn't really, so while she tried to do the immature name aspect, well, her name was spelled F-U-C-K-O. So instead of the supposed whatever, as far as I... I did it um, phonetically. And so apparently that upset her and I didn't care. And so it was as it was and I landed every one of them. And so it was as it was and I just didn't have any care, patience, concern or anything as far as any of them realistically were because by the time as it progressed it was just one of those if I can either be your best friend or your worst enemy choose wisely because if you want to stir up needless drama I don't care who you are I'll let you know I don't play that and so it's not something so then it was an issue because of music and stuff like that and nobody could understand and it's like well this is where i go around and everybody at old tenant presbyterian church knew mike did business in new york city in pittsburgh and philadelphia i don't know how they thought that there wasn't any i don't know where they thought i was going around but they obviously were speaking with my biological sister in comparison to paying attention to facts which was their downfall. 
each and every time that they tried to do something, if they went to my biological sister and or my biological mother and or my biological father, ish, uh, ish on that when it comes to that, because ish, because Mike a lot of times would be like, well, no, she, she did do this. I don't really agree with this part, but she did do it. And that's kind of the, the aspect of, whereas Anna would be, well, you should pay attention to Patricia. And Patricia would be like, yes, pay attention to me. And so it was that sort of thing and where I just didn't play any of those games. And it was just, I don't have patience for you. I don't have time for you. I don't care about your feelings. I don't care about your opinions. And so I tend to stand my ground. So in those particular references though, because I had already been in school, I don't know what other people did in their classes, there were classes that actually had debating. And so, you know, social studies, history, we went and did those things. That was something we went over, especially in Marlboro Middle School and certain classes in Asher Holmes Elementary School. So I don't know what those people did in Manalapin and Freehold, uh, what, I grew up going in, in, as far as school is concerned, it was as it was. And so they had whatever fluffy bunny sort of viewpoint that they had as far as in comparison to reality. And so, you know, the, the irony is they tried to claim that they thought I was sheltered. And again, I'm growing up going to like Newark with Mike. I, I'm growing up going to Hoboken. Again, this is the 1980s, 1990s. Don't be thinking it's the same. It might in some ways, but not really. Um, from some of the stuff I've seen, so then, you know, you got like Red Bank, you know, in the 1980s, 1990s. Uh, you got the South Pines. You got the Pine Barrens as well, as far as certain other areas. You got Elizabethtown. You got Piscataway. You got Tom's River. Um, so if you know those areas in the 1980s and 1990s, it's very, very different compared to some of the stuff I've seen since, you know, 2020. And so like, it's so much cleaner. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have a problem driving around at night, which is the truth because I did. And so, you know, there are those aspects where it's, it's kind of obviously different. And so, but you know, I mean, not that I wouldn't have done that back then. I would have been fine back then because I'm me. Um, but like, I wouldn't feel as nervous for certain other people, I should say. So, cause you know, if you know those areas, you, you understand. And so like, then you have, you know, I mean, I've brought up Hoboken. What's another one? Um, yeah, no, Tom's River is actually a really good, that's a really good reference as far as the 1980s and 1990s. And so, you know, the people who are from, oh, and then Edison. Yeah, Edison, New Jersey. There's a few areas that if you're from there, you know. <laughs> Meaning New Jersey. And so Pittsburgh and Philadelphia and then the five boroughs. And so, but Old Tenet Presbyterian Church, the youth group actually thought that they could consider me as sheltered because I didn't watch movies or television shows that were above a certain rating. Whereas I looked at them and I was like, you have no idea what sheltered is. If you actually had to go in certain areas of where I've been growing up going, you would learn real quick how sheltered you actually are. So for example, there's one female, uh, her name is Amy Hughes, and she had shown up to Old Tenet Presbyterian Church. She was one of those that were on the other side and she was like, yeah, totally showed you, you would ever. And it's like, except no, except nothing. You're not really at that level because, and here's an example. So she said she's in Maryland. Well, if she's not willing to go outside at night, you know, if, or, or, or I should clarify, if she's not willing to go outside at night by herself, that lets you know her childhood, okay? In comparison to what I grew up with. So they don't have that particular, you know, here's another example. When volunteering at Club Sapphire and walking around the perimeter and handling stuff, those people wouldn't look at that and actually have common sense. Those people would think along the lines of my biological sister and biological mother. Whereas my biological father most likely would be like, well, 
So there was this one time, so see what had happened. <laughs> so this one time I had to take this delivery of watch stuff to where, so see what had happened, sort of situation. Like, so see what had happened was, um, there was this time and then she did this and you know, it's cool. It was cool. So, so see what had happened. <laughs> Whereas everybody else who wouldn't know that, which would be the entire congregation of Old Tenet Presbyterian Church. It would be the majority of people at Asher Holmes Elementary School, Marlboro Middle School, St. John Vianney High School, and also the St. John Vianney High School in a little bit of a different capacity. And so, you know, <clears throat> whereas Illinois, they, they would have like two references. <laughs> One would be in the common pit, and the other would be a cafeteria table. That's pretty much the references that they have, which, when you think about it, should be enough. <laughs> Especially when it comes to New Jersey regarding Old Tenet Presbyterian Church, because if they were to learn about that, well, where do you think I learned that? Did you think I learned that at Old Tenet Presbyterian Church? You know, did you think that any of you actually would ever know because you know how white privileged you are, because realistically you are. You think that you have the covering of something and you actually don't. Because I say so, that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all those little youth group wanna be something special when you're not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, you don't have common sense, and obviously you didn't learn respecting life after 1993 and 9-11. Yeah, yeah, because if you did, you wouldn't waste things. In the hypothetical of those spoiled brat types, because that's really what they were. And since, you know, there's the terminology of white privilege, well, there's Neff Chapel, and then there's Old Tenet Presbyterian Church, and they are two white buildings. And those types of people, ironically, are just too white. And, you know, in the actual terminology of regarding, you know, book reading and stuff like that, thinking they'd actually know me when I didn't ever want to know some of them. I didn't ever actually make that genuine attempt. I actually was spending time with the adults because the adults were far more intriguing to me than any of those were. And so while those were doing the child whatever, I was spending time with the adults. And then they got jealous because they tried to speak with some of the adults that I would speak with, like some of the guys who showed up in a business suit. And I don't mean just the, and, I, and for that, I don't just mean the guys in the black suits with the white, button downs and, and ties. There are plenty of individuals in various color suits that would show up. It depended on the type of fabric. And so those particular individuals that I would be speaking with, whatever type, by the time of essentially middle school, it was noticed that I wasn't going and doing what they were doing. They, if they were to actually think about it, each and every time that the youth group or whatever Sunday school, whatever, had gone outside to go play, I had to be informed because I was in the middle of discussing stuff and half the time when they would do that, I would just look at them, well, if you want to go play, go play. And I'm discussing this with whatever and stuff like that. And this is back essentially, not just Marlboro Middle School time frame, even when I was in elementary school. So while they were doing the, you know, child age sort of stuff, that just didn't ever interest me. To the same level so sure okay fine i'd go and compete and whatever if there was and then i'd go back inside and go and talk with the individuals because that was far more intriguing and interesting to me than a lot of that stuff and so i was as it was because those types being those types and and, and the different factors of so you had like someone like dennis 
and he was a redhead ginger who just was one of those really immature people. I'd actually compared him to the Sunday comic Dennis the Menace, and he thought that I was joking, and I was like, no, you actually did some of the stuff. But whatever, that's fine. I don't really like you anyway. You're kind of annoying, and you're so immature, I don't have patience for you. And so there were a lot of people in that reference where because of how they were. And so that, you know, ones that knew that they weren't ever going to go to Broadway because they couldn't get to that level. The ones that knew that they weren't ever going to get to other aspects because they just knew that they couldn't get to that level instead of going and channeling their focus in a more positive way. They wanted to do things their way. And it was one of those, if you don't learn, you're going to learn. So, but they were similar to their parents, of course, because you have the consideration regarding how many had actually debated to put the basement in, in Old Tenet Presbyterian Church. And it was one of those, well, and I did bring this up during that particular discussion, which again, the youth group building is another white building regarding where it's called Harvest Home now. And that's to the level of the congregation as to what it went from went to, which is something I warned them about because some of the debating points was, well, you know, if we have a historical church, we can do whatever. And I informed them there's only so much ground regarding Old Tenet Presbyterian Church. This is New Jersey. Once the, you know, plots are as they are, that's it. So you're going to ride coattails that you won't even actually get to utilize if you do this. You could just go and do, you know, these few things. Otherwise, you are not going to achieve anywhere remotely close to what you're looking at. Because they wanted to try to claim that these different factors were going to be worthwhile for the grounds. And I, said, and I informed them, no, not with the way the grounds are. And if you even wanted to try to make anything, the state of New Jersey would stop you on a dime. The irony is if you go forward and actually get your little plaque, they won't allow you to change the grounds at all. And, you know, you, you won't ever undo that. And so the congregation tried to claim whatever they tried to claim. And I stood my ground in the church of Old Tenet Presbyterian Church where there really weren't any other children because they went to Sunday school or they went to the nursery or whatever they went to go do in comparison. So while my biological sister was, you know, in the Sunday school or whatever it was, I was in the front row of the church. And no, I'm, I'm t I, I took a stand and, you know, it was the late 1980s, early 1990s and a bunch of individuals was as it was. And so now looking at the situations in reference to Old Tenet Presbyterian Church and the paperwork that now has to be put forward each and, and I don't know if it's each and every week. But that is as it is, if it's not each and every week and it's each and every month, well, that's part of the paperwork when you want to go into a historical society. You know, for those who don't understand, think of homeowners associations, okay? And, and in comparison to a homeowners association, it's a historical society. So you just keep that in mind, mm-hmm? So anytime you do a little historical society, do hickey bob if you do anything, it, it is as it is. That's just how it goes. And so I made attempts to explain to those people and they thought that they knew better. They thought it was going to be, and it just wasn't. I warned them of that. They thought it was funny that they knew better because they're biologically older than I am. And it's no, you don't see you. Number one, you don't even see the spiritual ramifications that you're causing. If you go through with it. Second, 
you don't even see how, like, they had no vision whatsoever. They just wanted this little plaque. That was it. They didn't care about anything else. And it's like, you have absolutely, you want to talk about instant gratification. They had absolutely no vision. I could see about 20 years that, well, I mean, I guess I got to see it in 25 to 30 years as far as the reality. And um, it is as it is, as far as that's concerned. And so, you know, while in the youth group, they tried to actually <laughs> celebrate that they were capable to get me to be mature and actually see their point of view. And so while we were in the youth group area, which again now is Harvest Home, um, I didn't understand why they were celebrating. Because if they had actually paid attention to the fact that I was being mature and actually had brought, and they, they did get upset about the initial larger points that I was more accurate than any of them were, but then they tried to, to be like, yeah, high five except they couldn't because, you know, one by one, it was one of those, oh, well, she actually did. And it started to sink in. And when it started sinking in as to how accurate I had been, it was, they started having issues. And I informed them, if you listen to me from the get-go, you wouldn't because, and I'm talking about in the upcoming weeks. So in the upcoming weeks where each of these individuals that were like, yeah, high five, um, it started sinking in that, you know, they, they were capable to see in their own lives some of the, whatever the debate was about. And so each and every point I brought forward where they were once high fiving, they realized how accurate I had actually been. And not just in reference to church, in reference to the larger aspects. And so, you know, I didn't, but see, the thing was, I didn't rub it in. I didn't go and salt in the wound sort of thing. I did get to the point though, when they started having attitudes, then you know what you need to do for your own closure is you need to acknowledge the truth. Because as soon as you acknowledge the truth, it'll actually be freeing to you, but you have to do it in a certain way. And so while some of the individuals in youth group, they chose the paths they chose, others, you know, were, it was fairly simple. Or it was, you know what, Susan, you were correct, and da 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 and let's move forward. And that's pretty much the mature way to do it in comparison to the other ones that stirred up the little young ones. And, you know, in the younger parts of Old Tenet Presbyterian Church Sunday School, and, you know, oh, go do this. And it's like, see, this is the problem with your type of people. There's no excuse for you to go and do that. So that that's, in my opinion, especially with some of them, that's contributing to the delinquency of a minor. That's just the facts. So if you're purposefully doing stuff, so like, for example, Amy Hughes is an elementary school teacher. And so if she were to be doing certain things, it's, well, you know, first and foremost, in the, in the state of Maryland, a highly democratic state, um, they, they kind of are a smidgen CDO as far as uh, policy. And if you are caught stirring up needless drama and certain references, how did you not learn from New Jersey as far as that's concerned? Because that's what you're going to learn if you do something. So you got, you know, the Zoom teachings now as far as that sort of stuff is concerned. And you, I mean, that's kind of the facts. So if, for as an example, my daughter and my son were dealing with certain needless problems in McCoy Elementary School. And so if during the time frame of, you know, the initial afterwards, as far as publishing my first books, if you go to my website, www.susaneeling.com, and some people wanted to try to claim otherwise because of whatever paperwork aspects. Well, here you go. These Zoom 
aspects, you have the overall demographic of certain boxes that have been checked in reference to certain stereotypes for these certain individuals. Here's your little Zoom schools. Here, zoom through that. Go ahead and take a look at the different supposed adult volunteers. Here you go. This is a stereotype. This is what occurred. Let me know. So my daughter, my son, and I dealt with what we dealt with as far as the civilian recreational scuba diver sector. You have that as well. Where, you know, at first they might have whatever their opinions were. Well, how did things go in 2019? They made the choices that they did. They assumed whatever they assumed. Now, if that has to do with needless stalking because they would think that that would be that way, because again, they'd have to take the binky out of their mouths and actually have a genuine discussion with me, which would be no different than the year of 2009 and 2010. That would, before even showing up to Clear Spring Scuba Park, that officially would show where they were at the year of 2009 because of those types of needless problems. So there are two areas in what is supposed to be biological adult life. Even though scuba diving allows a certain age, I'm talking about full level. So even in scuba diving, they have the junior aspects for those clarifications in comparison. They have obviously different requirements, so on and so forth. So when you take in consideration how much work I had accomplished and those particular points in time of 2009, those individuals that made the choice to keep in the proverbial way the binky in their mouth instead of actually having a discussion, if in that reference of 2019 that they had any act, like let's say they actually thought they knew exactly what was going to happen. Maybe, you know, because I had a dental implant. Maybe they'd be ignorant enough to think that'd be good enough. In comparison. Maybe, hypothetically, they wouldn't think that that would be that big of a deal. Because they would think that they had every reference in comparison to the reality. Don't pretend that's actual genuine care when it comes to me either. That would be the, uh, the complete opposite. That would actually prove the needless problems I dealt with in reference to the civilian recreational scuba diver sector because that would actually prove exactly who they were in 2009. All because of being an unattached female scuba diver me translating to not being in a relationship with any of the male scuba divers in that capacity. That actually would officially close the case on each and every one of those civilian recreational scuba divers for thinking that that would be acceptable in the hypothetical. Because that would officially show that they didn't ever actually care about scuba diving, it would officially show that they were only recreational scuba divers in comparison to anything remotely serious. It would additionally prove their lack of capability to genuinely communicate as an adult maturely would do. Because no mature adult would ever think that that would be better than actually having a discussion no mature adult would think that that would be more ideal. Not unless you take in consideration idealistic. However, that's not ideal. Idealistic translates to you have these thoughts of what could be and you might romanticize something in comparison to having a solid foundation. And so that maturity level would not be there at all which would officially show in proof to each and every individual that I had known in person, face to face in person, regarding what is supposed to be the consenting adult lifestyle, what I told them about those people in the civilian recreational scuba diving sector.
As to the differences between law enforcement, fire department, and military scuba divers compared to that civilian recreational sector. And sure, there could be military scuba divers. They were in the military and then they went into the civil, but it's the difference between a civilian recreational scuba diver. Because while, yes, in the military you have joking around and you have different antics, in the civilian recreational scuba diving sector, think about that, especially when taking in consideration military types of scuba divers, where you know that you only joke around with that stuff on land. You know when it comes to your gear and all that sort of stuff, you need as many to actually do that correctly as far as whatever dot, dot, dot. You don't mess around with that because you actually appreciate life. Because you have whatever mission, yeah, it is what it is. However, you have your mission, you have to take care of stuff. These civilian recreational scuba divers proving that that's what they are. So take in consideration in reference to those civilian recreational scuba divers. They have a female who shows up unattached, not dating any scuba diver at all instead of actually being appreciative that instead of the stereotypical needless drama that certain factors are, instead of the emotional feelings and garbage of that, instead of let's do this and that, female taking it seriously. Instead, needless drama because as a female my choice to pay attention to my education and earning my 26 scuba diving certifications especially knowing that whenever going scuba diving i'm not only responsible for myself i'm responsible for my son and my daughter and i'm also responsible for if you know the assigned whatever in those capacities of they're responsible for themselves and if they're actually a decent human being, they'll be actually responsible in the, the reference of regarding me. However, I also am realistic because I grew up going to the Atlantic area of the ocean and I didn't have anybody that assisted me with my work. I had some teaching moments, lessons, um, advice, in that regard, in comparison, so I'm in the civilian recreational sector, these people running around and putting on different costumes, moving other gear, thinking that's considered flirting, in comparison. And I'm military. I let them know that. I let them know that I was going to do military scuba diving. They thought I was playing a game. They thought I was joking. And I was telling them the truth. Those civilian recreational scuba divers thought that I wasn't serious. Again, you can go to my three volume book series in reference to the adventures of Susan Meeling scuba diver extraordinaire regards to my book section on my website that'll take you to a link through Amazon. That's the facts. So when I brought up that I was going to go to the Vandenberg, those civilian recreational scuba divers thought that I was telling a joke. Those civilian recreational scuba divers thought that I was playing a game. Those civilian recreational scuba divers weren't taking me seriously. Those civilian recreational scuba divers additionally only thought that I was wasting my time when in reality they were wasting theirs. Projection much? And so these civilian recreational scuba divers in this hypothetical to what levels of accuracy, of course. Instead of taking me seriously, they complained, they whined, they stirred up needless drama in an area that you don't do that. In comparison, I mean, if you actually appreciate life, because these are natural bodies of water, even the reservoir, it is as it is. These are natural bodies of water. These civilian recreational scuba divers, instead of actually taking life seriously, they made the choices that they did. And so in those particular references, those needless problems in those regards are exactly that, needless problems. 
So while they thought whatever they thought, it didn't change anything. So in 2009 to 2019, nothing different. Nothing worthwhile, a bunch of needless drama, same thing in regards to my bathing suits, which what does that translate to when male and or female scuba divers go and take clothing, such as a bathing suit, other than immaturity, theft, and so on and so forth. Doesn't matter as far as what they wish would be acceptable, it's not. So these individuals, instead of having the common sense, did this by choice. In comparison, don't pretend that they're not civilian recreational scuba divers at that point, because that's the most worthless amount of garbage stirring up that needless drama. So where they could have actually had a discussion and actually had actual questions answered, their choices in that hypothetical only proves their lack of maturity, lack of communication skills, lack of worth as supposed instructors. Because there's not an, any instructor that is worth their weight. There's not any teacher that is worth their weight that is not willing to actually answer questions. So in this lecture, Okay, if you have a respectful and etiquette, go ahead and leave the comment. However, I also have been around multiple locations. I've gone to events, so on and so forth, and what discussions I've had are the discussions I've had. So it's been a 10-year situation where there hasn't been anybody that actually asked me anything actually valuable beyond the situations of what stereotypes there were. That's their choice. That lets you know in comparison. That also lets you know uh, ide the um, intellectual property. You don't have the right to my intellectual property. That's my intellectual property because it's my personal experiences. See how that goes? So they don't actually have the authority to even speak on behalf of my scuba diving because they don't have the experience. They have no background. They have no understanding. They don't even have the basic knowledge points as to. So here's the example once again. As far as 2020, went out to the Atlantic area of the ocean. In 2019, I did the same. I went out to the Pacific area of the ocean. So it, it's, it's not anything that I've hidden. And each and every time I've proven time and time again, but you have to have that intellectual capacity because if you have the immature, despite being a biological adult, you won't understand anything. And why are you in civilian recreational levels? Because then it's perfect that you're in the little kiddie pool version in comparison to real scuba diving. Unfortunately though, for the reservoir and people who get water from that reservoir and anywhere else in the state of Texas that civilian recreational scuba divers go to because of that lack of common sense. So that's kind of the facts. I mean, again, I brought this stuff forward in actual discussions in person, face-to-face -face in person compared to this lecture, but there were a bunch of civilian recreational scuba divers in their issues having stirred up whatever needless drama because of their lack of maturity during those years. I had people who complained literally because I didn't recognize them when they weren't in a bathing suit and they were in a store location. The background was completely different. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, a bikini with a wetsuit in a water area compared to whatever store instead. It's, you know, I don't consider myself um, someone who really stands out. I know that I don't necessarily camo, but I don't expect people to automatically know me because I know better. And so those particular types of individuals that stir up that needless drama because they feel that they're that much more of whatever. Yeah, maybe, you know, months or years down the line. Oh, you know what I think, whatever. 
but that's months or years down the line and you lose out on that time. That's what you do. So if you want to be one of those types that, oh, I'll just do, what is it, the, the garbage that I dealt with in reference to the Montana Vortex, where that male and female did the little selfie thing in comparison to having any human decency or respect. Um, you know, if that's the reference point of those types in comparison to actually being mature biological adults instead, and you know, you, you have this sensation that makes you feel special in comparison, because it's not. It's actually a childish, taunting aspect, because nobody who would actually genuinely care about someone that would actually want to be involved with someone would ever do things in that capacity. Because if you actually want to be in a relationship, whether it is a friendship, obviously not necessarily an acquaintance, or maybe a different level of acquaintance to friendship, and or in regards to depending on how you look at family, I don't refer to it the same way as far as like my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister. This is why I, de I give that definition. That is my biological mother, my biological father, my biological sister, not what I consider family. Huge difference because of those aspects to those regards. So I give the respect and I honor the biological aspect in the scientific ways. However, other than that, because of any hypothetical as to proof, why would I ever consider that as family? Stir up needless drama for me? No, I don't know, I don't need that. There's the rest of the world. You're supposed to actually be a safe haven. If you are not a safe haven because you stir up needless drama, or instead of actually having common sense and respecting the actual boundaries that I have the right to set, then no, you're not a safe haven in regards to my biological mother, biological father, or biological sister, because you have to actually learn to accept the fact that I have my right to choose. I have my right to go do what I prefer to do. If you choose to do certain things and those particular factors, you're not assisting me. You're stirring up needless drama, and I don't have patience for that. Which is why, yet again, okay, fine, in the state of Texas, whatever, whatever, go and do, I have that respect. So I have a minimum standard in which you will have the etiquette and respect. I will not do what you did and be hypocritical. So you will either actually invite me, or if you don't invite me, and this includes after discussing on the phone, that's it, our relationship beyond any other, it's irreparable at that point in time. If they thought that I was just gonna show up to their house and walk up to the front door, no, that was not it. They were going to do things the way up because unlike scuba diving, it's not the same. Unlike what is supposed to be the consenting adult lifestyle, it's not the same. Unlike the pagan community, not the same. It is a living dwelling where you are supposed to have boundaries and capabilities to privacy. You don't do that when it comes to where I live. I will actually not be hypocritical and you will either have human decency and prove to me that you did not cause me any needless drama or if you don't invite me, you will just solidify everything I brought forward. You will solidify everything in full truth and prove to each and every individual that you didn't ever respect my boundaries that I've had every right to set. You will prove that you, since I was a child, did everything I brought forward in truth. You will prove to Dyphus that I spoke with them in truth. You prove that. You will prove what I explained to Baptist Camp Lebanon the first year what I was dealing with. You will prove what I told Asher Holmes Elementary School is true. You will prove what I told Marlboro Middle School is true. You will prove what I told St. John Vianney High School is true.
about what I was dealing with when growing up. You will prove what I told people at Old Tenet Presbyterian Church is true. You will prove everything I told all of the neighbors is true. You will prove that every person that I spoke with throughout the state of Illinois is true. You will prove that every person I explain things to throughout the state of Texas is true. You will prove that if you don't go and do it my way. And since as soon as that time was up, I wasn't going to lay it out as far as an ultimatum when it came to them. I didn't have the patience. I didn't care. They were going to prove it one way or another. And since certain things went the way it did as far as Clear Springs Scuba Park, I wasn't willing to waste my time. So because of the way they chose to do it and the proof thereof regarding the pagan community, as well as what's supposed to be the consenting adult lifestyle community, the proof is there as to what I dealt with needlessly. Don't pretend that Mike, Anna, and or Patricia actually cared about me. Don't pretend they actually cared about my son. Don't pretend they actually cared about my daughter. Because if they actually did, they would have followed my rules. Being the one and only sponsor, most importantly though, being a mom. They didn't do what they were commanded to do. They thought it was a joke. I don't care what they think. I didn't ask for their opinion. Multiple times. This also proves in regards of Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. This additionally proves in reference to the Army as far as those needless types. It's the facts. So when those needless types stir up drama, when there's no drama that needs to be stirred up because life is as it is already, those needless types are as they are. So you want to be that way? I'm going to go my way. I don't want to have anything to do with you ever again because that's the end of that. Those individuals where they could have, they made the choice not to. So I'm gonna guesstimate no different than regarding you know, that hypothetical. That proves what was more important because only life in person, face to face in person would be considered as. So, if they went and spent time with my biological sister, couldn't wait to blah, blah, garbage of garbage. Only proves what I told people in the lifestyle. Only proves what I put in writing. Just proves that. Every detail of. So, you know, there should be laws against that in every capacity as to any needless problem proven. As far as anything that I'm accurate about when it comes to my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, and or my ex-in-law's involvement. There is no cause, reason, or excuse for anything that they needlessly did. Don't pretend that they did anything out of care and concern for me. Because if they actually did, they wouldn't have caused any needless drama. They would have actually maintained the boundaries that I set instead of not caring. So, for example, in regards of when I moved to Carrollton, if they hadn't stirred up needless drama in the hypothetical regarding my scuba diving, regarding my house, regarding my children's school, if they didn't do that, then they respected boundaries. If they did, however, if they stirred up any needless drama in any of those areas, that proves that. That's stalking, harassment, needless problems. It's just how it is. That shows they're not even, at that point, it literally is. You're not even an ex. And when you're told that you need to just stop, this is the problem that you are. So stay out of my life, stay out of my finances, stay out of my work, relinquish what rights you didn't ever have because realistically, 1996, you were over regarding my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, ex-in-laws, you're never was -es. And as far as regarding others that are involved as to the hypotheticals, you also are not ever was -es in certain references. So as far as Old Ted at Presbyterian Church and those people, you're never was to me. 
stirring up that garbage, knowing damn well, no, 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 no. That's nothing of any value or worth. And additionally, stirring up needless drama in the state of Texas, just because where I could have actually. So here's the proof on that. If Mike, Anna, and Patricia told you people in Old Tenet Presbyterian Church that they gave me names that I didn't remember because those were their friends in comparison to mine, can you see any uh, patterns of behavior? So I actually could have been back in the area and answered those questions back then. But you know what? That would require my biological mother and biological father to not be immature. To actually have maturity in comparison. However, when you have needless drama in a church, where why would you do that? What would make you think that would put you above others to stir up needless drama in a church in comparison to where you're supposed to just simply actually be capable to go to church, have a bit of sanctuary for some time for the rest of the other aspects of the week instead of needless drama? And then there's the aspects, two areas that you're not supposed to be stirring up needless drama. One, scuba diving. Why are you getting up? Why are you doing childish, immature garbage that even a kindergartner would know better than to do? Secondly, because I'll, and I can say that with proof because my son and my daughter knew to keep their hands together when we go to Atlantis Discover. They wouldn't touch anything in Atlantis Discover. If I told them, keep your hands to yourself, they did. They followed what was the commands. They were respectful to the guys of Atlantis Discovered. They didn't mess with any of their stuff. They didn't cause any needless drama. They had given compliments genuinely because I taught them correctly. I raised my son and my daughter correctly. And then there were other people that decided to involve themselves where they didn't have any right to. So there's that. Then you have these other situations regarding where you don't need needless drama, and that's in the what is supposed to be consenting adult lifestyle. Supposed to, because why would you do that? So if in reference to after my scuba diving, in comparison to ever actually speaking with me, because PADI is out in California, and NAUI could have just asked, they could have just spoken with me. But if they went back and forth because of the East West Coast garbage and then, you know, relationship that didn't even last that long and temper tantrum, all this other crap, instead of being mature adults, you know, that actual discussion, instead of being overly feelings and emotional garbage, you know, taking a look at the fact that I earned 26 scuba diving certifications in less than a 10 month period, you'd think that you could tell that I'm not the typical civilian at all, and not that I am, but well, yeah, it's a gray area. However, why would you waste time if you actually cared about life? Because if you think that stalking and harassment and tapping in that regard is actual genuine care and concern, well, do tell as far as my Medal of Honor art project trips where you would consider that. Would you consider that in reference to when I was out looking for Shoemaker? Would you, would you consider genuine concern for my best interests out when I was looking at getting Shoemaker as far as my Medal of Honor art project trip in the year 2017? Would you consider that in reference to Iowa in the year 2018? Would you consider that? Because anybody who would have actual genuine care and concern would not consider those situations that way. Because there's no excuse, cause, or reason for those needless problems where people could have actually been assistive in comparison. Don't pretend. Because if you actually had genuine care and concern for me, speaking with me, I've given my phone numbers, my website, my email, etc. Don't pretend. Because if you think that just listening 
in that regard or just following around instead of just asking me. It's not rocket science. All you have to do is have etiquette and respect and be truthful. So I don't know what other people's issues are as far as that's concerned, but it literally is that. And I have every right to be upset about that, especially when it comes to those particular two, and then Montana trip in regards to 2017. Then the other stuff, as it's, it's realistically, well, why don't I wanna do my Medal of Honor Art Project trip right now, and why am I taking a break? Not just because of everything else that I personally had to deal with in reference to the obvious images that I've taken in reference to Arco, as well as Great Falls, among other locations. So since those types of people haven't had the common sense to actually think, then there's those other factors of those situations. So if there was the actual genuine concern for me and for my best interests, where has that in-person, face-to-face in-person actually been? Has to be in truth, though. That hasn't been anywhere. Because if it has been known regarding ARCO, if it has been known regarding the Montana Vortex, if it has been known referencing the traffic in 2017, if that has been known, and everybody, I've, I've been honest, but if those people that have caused needless drama have done so, then what legal responses is that justice required? Because why would you actually think that would be acceptable? So if that needless drama, which I did not consent to, so again, I've explained in regards of the show that was supposed to be called Guardian Assholes, I specifically said, your only option is if you specifically get with me. You don't have the freedom of expression that way at all. It's not within your constitutional rights at all whatsoever, no matter what somebody might wish. It's not there, not for you at all. There is no freedom of the press either because you don't have the authority because my constitutional rights of my freedom of religion outweigh yours automatically. My right to privacy outweighs yours as far as your wish in reference to that my right to privacy automatically, especially in Washington state. However, my freedom of religion outweighs your aspects of freedom of the press. If you don't ask, and even if you do, and you're told no, I have that right. So if you don't do certain things, I have my rights in comparison to what you might wish. So if there were people who went and said, oh, we'll get her to whatever, we'll, we're friends. I don't know who would ever be ignorant enough to think that that would ever be something that I would ever sign off on. Because I could tell you right now, the answer would be no. I'm, I'm quite adamant about a few things. You would have to speak with me in detail of it's not something that it doesn't matter. No, it does. It always has. So yes, I've discussed one or two aspects with my son. I informed him just as similarly. You better speak with me about it, boy, because you don't have permission to just run amok. You know that I'm medically retired from the army. You don't have the leniency or the leeway. You actually have less leeway because of the fact of my blue ID card. You have less of that than you think you do. So if there were a bunch of civilian little teeny bopper sort of millennials that I warned my son about, I told him he needed to speak with me. 
Yeah, anybody of those types that told my son otherwise, you didn't have that authority and by technicalities, you contributed to the delinquency of a minor, officially. Especially with the knowledge as to my son and I, how we wound up in Washington State, automatically. The Stoney LaRue concert, as far as March of 2013, the stuff as far as my daughter, any connection to McCoy Elementary School, Carrollton, Texas, or just the state of Texas in general, you automatically, my son has that umbrella because of that from me. That is an umbrella of protection, but the rest of you people, no. There's no umbrella of protection, especially when you take in consideration the space aspects. That's a common sense factor. Obviously, you actually don't have those rights. And then additionally with my blue ID card, there are those facts. So you don't have that leeway in those references in the same capacities, especially if you have any involvement as to any needless drama that occurred in the state of Texas. Any direct connection in regards of that officially, you don't have that leeway. I wasn't doing anything in regards to the state of Texas. You people show up in Washington state. You people show up during my Medal of Honor art project trips. You people stirred up needless drama the same way you did wherever in whatever city of whatever event I went to. You people in what's supposed to be the consenting adult lifestyle, you did not get my consent. That needless drama garbage is exactly that needless drama garbage so for those types of people that would think and again a secondary location you just don't do that in you get involved in stirring up needless drama in what is supposed to be the adult consenting lifestyle you stirred needless drama in the adult consenting lifestyle without consent. So nobody who would be a part of that has any right to be upset at all. I was actually dealing with quite a bit of stuff that I didn't need to deal with. So since these situations have occurred, very particular, I'm extremely CDO. And so while other people might find it interesting, I don't. And so I won't tolerate certain things because unlike some people, I don't appreciate certain types of needless behavior. So when I have the knowledge, understanding and comprehension of other situations, that needless drama is exactly that, needless drama. So while other people might have whatever feelings or what have you, since I've dealt with a few things, you know, since my childhood and teenage years and all that, I don't have the same patience for that. I don't care about that. So while others might wish that I would, I won't because I'm not that type of person. Just because I've been to a lot of events doesn't translate to whatever your assumptions are. Just because I was born and raised in New Jersey does not translate to whatever your assumptions are. Just because I have gone and written and authored and compiled as I have does not translate to whatever your assumptions are. So if you stir up needless drama, knowing I'm already dealing with stuff, you're not mature. That's not a mature choice. That's an immature choice. That's an arrogant, haughty choice in comparison. So why would I believe in humanity? with what I've been dealing with. What would ever be humane about anything that I've been dealing with? 
In truth, in genuine truth, because if you have people in your life that you wouldn't allow or would go out of your way to actually make comfortable in an actual way by actually discussing with, don't pretend that you have done anything that has been assistive. Don't fool yourself that way. Because again, I'm not interested in that. Remember, I don't watch that sort of garbage or trash. What TV shows I did watch was only when I had mono Epstein barbronchitis, Lyme's disease, and the flu all at the same time. That was the only way that I was actually interested in watching anything. Think about that. Any other point in time, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. I just wanted to live my own life. Go and do as I wanted to do instead. So while other people, if that's there, whatever, that's other people compared to me. It's common sense. So while that needless drama from Old Tenet Presbyterian Church and those people who thought I was actually impressed by them, there wasn't anything impressive of them regarding the youth group. There wasn't anything that, because everything they had was only from what their parents had. Nothing they did that was worthwhile. Nothing they did that they earned. They weren't of any value or importance to me in the ways they thought they were. So while those people may have thought otherwise, the reality is the reality. So whatever their opinions have been is exactly that in comparison. However, those people got into social media well before I did. I wasn't ever in social media until after waking up from my coma, after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, after having been diagnosed with a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain. After, additionally, being pregnant with my son, that's when I had first gotten involved with social media. When I was pregnant with a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain. If I remember correctly, it's somewhere around three, four or five months along so any females that have ever been pregnant, just remember, did you have a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of your brain as well or not? If you didn't have a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of your brain, and if you did not have a head injury just before, and if you did not deal with headaches and migraines while having that going on, and memory deficits and cognitive disorders, if you didn't have that, you have no right to complain about anything when it comes to online, when it comes to me, at all. In any capacity of. So if any of those types stirred up needless drama because of their customary aspects to who they had already been. We'll keep that in mind. What month of what year would there have been some ignorance? You know, because of course, when it comes to social media online, was I capable to bring up that I have had mediumship situations? Because does anybody actually know about that during that point in time? Because if not, what arrogance, what haughtiness, what sloth, what vanity in those references. In addition to pride and lust and greed and envy. What would that be? And then if you're biologically older than me, then what does that show about you? 
because I would guesstimate you might have a little bit more to worry about in that consideration. You know, so there's those social media aspects where just wasn't involved beforehand. I didn't see any value to it. I saw where I didn't want to be a part of certain things because all I saw was a bunch of childish behavior. And so I went and took care of stuff as best as I could instead. And so after a certain point in time, once whatever of whatever, I just didn't have time for certain things. And so if there are those that like stirring up needless drama in that sort of a way, well, there are those who don't. They don't consent to that. So you can't um, forget that. There's no way to. So if this has been some of those types in regards to those people, well then just think, would that be considered endangerment of a minor because my son had been an infant whenever born? Endangerment in regards of me because of only being a year out of my coma and then the Americans with Disabilities Act as far as invasion of privacy among a few other situations because then additionally to my daughter in that regard what does that translate to? Common sense don't think that there's a way of dis uh, disassociating because there's the reality of, and by the way, do you still have those original technology devices? Or has that changed over the years? So if you don't have the original technology device from the time frame that I first started in um, social media, which is 2001, by the way. In the year of 2001 was my first social media account in the forum aspects. Retired Army or whatever it was. That was my first. Just keep that in mind. If you don't have that original, you know what that translates to. Though it really doesn't matter anyway, because there's satellite transmissions and storage facilities and etc. per program. That's from 2001. What happened shortly thereafter? If there was anything. Something to consider. This is why maturity levels. So important. Mm hmm so there's that and so but why would people actually care about life in reality from the situations I've dealt with I mean there's some that I've noticed and then there are situations such as having actually explained. So similarly to 2009 through 2012 regarding my scuba diving, I explained these situations. And instead of people making suggestions that would actually be beneficial, they didn't do anything. So similarly to 2000 to 2009, they didn't do anything because why would you if you had actual maturity? People who have actual maturity actually have the capability to do that. They don't have to be prompted. People who can actually think for themselves, they don't need to be prompted. 
in order to actually make a suggestion or offer assistance. They don't need that because they have common sense to actually think for themselves. Because that's a choice. So, you know, um, in those references, who spoke with me and asked me or made a suggestion to me in a positive and beneficial way? Or did you ignore? Or did you go and speak with anybody except for, again, the one and only person to speak with? What level of lack of maturity would that be? What level of lack of common sense would that translate to? What level of actual lack of maturity and education? Because what would be education for that? Especially if you have had a first aid CPR sort of situation, what would that show to your lack thereof? Common sense. So if that goes back to whatever situation, which includes that semi-truck collision back in 2008, well again, what is the common sense factor when having explained that 10 to 15 semi-trucks back, one on each side? So unlike everybody else that was there, I'm the only one who did anything to assist. And you people literally had your own surrounding you and you didn't do anything for your own. So why would you think that you had any, any capacity of regards of? You didn't have any rights regarding me or my son or my daughter, which again, they weren't in the car. They weren't there. They were at my house in San Antonio, which if my daughter and or my son were asked about that and they told you the truth, that lets you know how ignorant and arrogant as far as that's concerned. Again, 10 to 20 semi trucks back while driving a VW Beetle. Not rocket science to the sight distance of a VW Beetle. 2008 or not, don't matter, compared to a semi truck. Although 10 to 15 on each side. I don't mean each side of the highway, I mean the two lane highway, each side. Just one. Down the dotted line pretty much translates that, if you have common sense. But that's if you have common sense. So if this stems from that, think about your lack of common sense. Think of how bitter you actually are for something that you should have just been appreciative. Because if you actually cared about life, the way I was informed, supposedly, well then, that voicemail should have been enough. But if you were looking at doing the lawsuit stuff, you should have said something instead. Because unlike some people, that's not my first thought. Because unlike some people, there is this aspect of maturity. And so only in the levels of if it has to go to, but I'm really big on justice. And what justice of? So no, I, I'm not going to go out anytime soon because I don't need to or want to because I have the right to recuperate from what I've dealt with because it's not as though there's been anybody that's actually assisted me in the correct capacities in what I actually need. 
Not that there's ever been anybody that has actually asked me that I could actually have that discussion with because that would be the minimum starting point. So while I can lecture, that's just lecturing. If there's not the minimum starting point of an actual discussion, then there's exactly that, not the minimum starting point of a discussion. Common sense. I'm not going to make an offer when you, in these hypotheticals, are the ones that cause the needless problems to begin with. And so, that's the fact. That would translate to the law firm, the school, and all that. That would actually be on you to discuss that reference. You, that's, that's your job. That's, that's how that goes. You know, since I had been the one representing the entire time. So, unlike some people, I wouldn't be the one who would have to make that offer. That's on the other side. Because that's common sense. Obviously. But that's if you have intelligence. And I guess, you know, maybe there are some types that just haven't ever met that type. But that's common sense. But then there's that issue. And then there's those issues. I guess it goes back to who appreciates life I appreciate life, but I also know better. It's kind of common sense. So, you guys think about that, because that's not on me. I made sure to take care of everything as best as I could. Everybody else's choices are that. So, you know, um... Maturity is important. So, you guys have a good day and make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel, like my official YouTube videos. And my audio obviously would include that to my official YouTube videos because that's common sense when saying watching and listening in the initial aspects of my official YouTube videos. So, additionally, go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com. Look at my journal blog, which everything should be, you know, the openness of. So the day that I post a journal blog, it should be out immediately. Shouldn't be any hesitation whatsoever from the time of the official publishing because that's my freedom of the press. Unlike some people, I didn't stalk or harass someone else. I didn't stir up any needless drama. So again, my constitutional rights and amendments within the Ten Commandments. So you know, E equals MC Square has brought this up about Twitter. If there's been anybody that did any needless harassment or problems needlessly and meddling, that's illegal because of my constitutional rights and amendments. Because that's the truth. So again, it's reality. It's two areas you don't stir up needless drama. And well, I mean, I guess I should say thank you ahead of time because there's the emerging aspects.
to take in consideration. I made attempts to warn. So whether or not that's appreciated or thought about or taken seriously, I know I look as I do. Comparison. Made attempts. Whatever that's worth. I don't really know. I haven't had anything beneficial as what I would consider as. So since other people may have assumed that they knew, that's the problem with assuming. So if you assume that I write, for example, minimalist, well, you don't know what my version of minimalist is. So that would be your assumption and your arrogance to think that you would know in comparison. That would be your fault yet again, because you don't know what my version of what I would consider as minimalist is. See, that's lectures. Your, you know, that's lectures no different. Murmuring, whatever. That's not actual discussion. But if you had intellect, you would actually be capable to distinguish those differences. If you had intelligence. If you could think for yourself that way. If you had common sense. Yeah. So that scuba diving stuff, really important. It's always been important, however, that required um, people who were actually mature to actually discuss with me. So those people that I once knew in scuba diving at International Scuba and the areas of, that was your choice, how you responded in comparison to what I actually needed. That was your choice. That was your assumptions, your intentions, etc. Individuals in what's supposed to be the consenting adult lifestyle, where it's supposed to be informed and truth consent, same thing. You chose to be immature. That was your choice. You're supposed to be a biological adult. If you make certain choices of needless drama, I don't care about needless drama. That's my choice. That's my right to choose as well. I also have the right to set minimum standards. And if you don't meet my minimum standards, then that's my right to choose. Can't really be a Democrat and be about right to choose or my body, my choice, any capacity, because then you'd be a hypocrite, obviously, and those common sense factors. But then, you know, does anybody have any pieces of paper they call a degree? And if so, what is it? Is it something worthwhile? Or is it something that just stirs up needless drama? Have a good day. Make sure to go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com. It's the 6th of May, 2022. Friday, seven days a week.